talk today is about how uh, the rules on uh, or electronic evidence is treated in the new rules or the revised rules on evidence. Okay, and I basically only have one uh, one question to answer. Now, are electronic documents governed by uh, the new rules or the revised rules on evidence? And uh, uh, I, and that might sound like a strange question. Uh, uh, myself, uh, um, they, I mean, this this arises from the fact that certain provisions of the uh, new rules on revised, uh, the revised rules on evidence uh, were inspired from the rules on electronic evidence, which uh, was enacted uh, about 20 years ago in 2001. Uh, and, you know, prior to this, I think, uh, there's always been a clear delineation between the rules on evidence and the rules on electronic evidence. And this was intentional on the part of the Supreme Court when, uh, when uh, the rules and electronic evidence, actually the, the subcommittee, we were part of the subcommittee on uh, uh, subcommittee on electronic commerce. Myself, uh, Attorney Francis Lim was there, uh, uh, Lito Averia, Abit de la Cruz, our chair was uh, uh, Justice uh, Jesus Elvinas of the Court of Appeals. He was our chairman. Um, and uh, one option that we, were, we had uh, proposed to the court was the possibility of immediately uh, amending the rules on evidence to allow for electronic uh, evidence. Uh, but the court felt, the Supreme Court felt that time, that uh, they wanted to have a standalone set of rules that they will later merge into the, uh, into the rules on evidence. So it's been 20 years and uh, the merger didn't happen. So I was, I was to say the least a bit disappointed that the new rules or the revised rules on evidence did not incorporate the rules on electronic evidence, given that 20 years had passed. So uh, in, in, from then until now, uh, there's always been a clear delineation. If, the, if it's a paper document that you are, uh, or the documentary evidence you're presenting is uh, paper-based, right, not electronic-based, then you, uh, you uh, use the rules on electronic evidence. Um, and if it is an electronic document, then you use the rules on electronic evidence. So, uh, so that's the first question, right? If you're faced with documentary evidence, you ask yourself, is this an electronic document? If it is an electronic document, then you go rules on electronic evidence. If it is not an electronic document, then you go rules, rules, on, uh, rules on evidence. And the authentication modes are different, right? So the authentication uh, modes or the mode of authenticating documentary evidence in the rules and evidence is by anyone who saw the signature, by anyone who knows the signature, and anybody who saw the document sign, anybody who saw the signature. And then there's the additional mode that was incorporated now by showing the genuineness and due execution of the document. Uh, in the rules on electronic evidence, it's an electronic uh, document or electronic evidence document. Uh, you have the modes on the rules on evidence. On top of that, you have the modes in the rules on electronic evidence, such as proving the uh, authenticity of a digital signature on the document. Uh, and of course, uh, the catch-all is uh, showing uh, sufficiency, uh, so through sufficient evidence, the integrity and reliability uh, of the electronic document to the satisfaction of the judge. And of course, uh, in, the, in the old rules, rules of evidence, there was a difference between what was an original in the rules on evidence and what is an original in the rules uh, in the rules on electronic evidence. But now, since the, the duplicate original rule has been adopted, uh, there doesn't appear to be a difference between, uh, between the two, right? Okay, so just uh, to go back a bit, a short history of the rules on electronic evidence. This was enacted by the court in 2001. Uh, initially also, one of the concerns of the court was, they were concerned that if, uh, uh, if the court users are not aware or are not uh, fully appraised of how to use electronic evidence in court, uh, somebody might get convicted. And so initially there was an, uh, an exclusion in the rules on evidence when it was first enacted. And in fact, a lot of the codal, uh, codals out there that show this uh, show that there is an exclusion of uh, criminal cases. Uh, uh, and this was true when in 2001, but a year later in 2002, the Supreme Court expanded uh, um, the uh, coverage of the rules on electronic for criminal cases. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, as late as 2010, a decision was rendered by, uh, I believe, a division of the Supreme Court where it was held that the rules on electronic evidence do not apply to uh, criminal uh, cases, which is obviously an error. However, that error was, uh, was corrected in 2014 
when uh, the same ponente uh, 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 issued another ruling uh, recognizing that uh, that in fact in 2002 uh, electronic evidence was admissible for uh, for criminal cases and the I un as I understood it was explained to me uh, that the, the the reason why it was overlooked was the manner in which the amendment of the rules on electronic evidence was uh, was done in 2002 by the court. Uh, two cases are worthy of note in relation to the rules on uh, electronic evidence. It's, that's the Napo Corp versus Codilla case and the MCC Industrial versus San Yong. Uh, I'll take the first one, uh, the second one first. No? So in MCC Industrial versus San Yong, uh, very, sim very simple holding. Basically, the court ruled that a fax is not an electronic document. Um, um, so simple. They said if, if, you, if you're proving a fax, a fax transmission, that is a paper document. You cannot rely on the rules on electronic evidence. Therefore, you have to show the original of the document and use the, the rules on, on evidence. Uh, of course, I disagree with, uh, and I've said this many times, I disagree with the ruling of the court in, uh, in MCC Industrial. Uh, the court relied on, uh, to support its position, the court relied on a, an interpolation made by Miriam Depens, by the late Senator Miriam Depens for Santiago um, uh, of the Senate sponsor uh, of the bill, and that was Senator uh, Magsaysay, uh, June Magsaysay. And uh, Senator, uh, Senator uh, Miriam Defensor Santiago asked point black, so faxes are not included, to which uh, Senator Magsaysay uh, said yes. Uh, interestingly enough, the basis for Senator Miriam's interpolation was her reading of the Canadian Electronic uh, Commerce Act. And in the, electronic, in, in the Canadian Electronic Commerce Act, uh, the definition of an electronic document is different. If it, it did not include transmission by electronic means, but the Philippine law definition in the e-commerce act includes uh, um, transmission by electronic means. So, if uh, a paper document is transmitted electronically, then it can be uh, it is considered uh, uh, electronic. Uh, sorry, it is considered an electronic document, and somehow this uh, this definition the the court uh, did not want to apply in relation to faxes. Okay. The second case is Napocor versus Codilla. And in Napocor versus Codilla, the National Power Corporation wanted to present photocopies as, uh, as evidence, as original evidence. Uh, and uh, uh, the argument was that uh, the photocopies are duplicate originals, which are allowed under the rules on electronic evidence. And so the, the solicitor, the Office of the Solicitor General um, uh, made the argument that uh, photocopies are electronic documents. On the ground that the act of photocopying uh, is an electronic processing of, uh, of information and therefore the product of that process is itself an electronic document. And uh, the court could not accept uh, that reasoning. Uh, I guess um, the, this problem has now been solved by the new rules and evidence because the rules on duplicate originals under the rules on electronic evidence is now part on the rules on, uh, on evidence. And therefore, photocopies now are considered duplicate originals under the uh, rules on uh, under the rules on evidence. Okay, so if you have a photocopy, you can present that, and only under certain circumstances could you be compelled to produce the original. Okay. Okay. So two two provisions were, as I say, inspired, or two of the amendments were inspired by the rules on electronic evidence. Uh, I I use the word inspired because uh, when the, the, our incorporation in the rules on, on uh, electronic evidence was actually a copy itself. Now, we copied the provisions from the federal rules on evidence 20 years ago. And uh, it was now th that those provisions were carried over to the, to the new rules on evidence. And that's a duplicate original uh, rule. Uh, and essentially, this is a rule that allows photocopies as original, as original evidence, right? Uh, and only in uh, circumstances where it would be inequitable. Well, number one, the first exception is if there is a genuine issue as to the authenticity of the original, then the original must be produced because you're questioning whether whether the original is in fact uh, authentic. The second is if the if it, it would be unfair not to produce the original, and so therefore there's some leeway on the part of the trial court judge to make a determination whether it is uh, whether it is unfair not to present the original. Okay, that's a duplicate original rule. The second, of course, is the business records exception. Uh, and basically, this is a, uh, an exception to the hearsay rule. 
for business records and for electronic documents before because this used to be only in the rules and electronic evidence. Uh, if you're presenting electronic business records, you don't have to present the, the person who made the recording. So if, it, if the record was made 10 years ago, you don't have to present the custodian 10 years ago. You could present the person who is the actual custodian today. So that rule has now been expanded uh, to cover, uh, to cover uh, business records that are paper-based. Uh, and just by way of, uh, no, of uh, trivia, this rule was, uh, was uh, 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 proposed by uh, attorney uh, Rolly Vinluan uh, of ACRA Law because they were running into this problem time and again. Uh, and so the, the, the subcommittee back then on electronic commerce adopted it in the rules on electronic evidence. And I think it's a wise rule uh, that makes it easier for companies to, to litigate. Okay. Uh, now, why is there, uh, sorry, these are, these are the rules that I was referring to, right? Uh, okay, so I don't know, sorry, no, no, I'm going. So the, I said there's a delineation between the rules on electronic evidence and the rules on evidence. Now there were there were two things that we that we inserted in the rules on electronic evidence. Uh, I guess you could I, I think you know my son would call it an Easter egg uh, that that tried to bridge uh, the distance between the rules on electronic evidence and the general and the general rules. And the first is this one. This is section one rule three of the rules on electronic evidence, and it says whenever a rule of evidence refers to the term writing right or document, okay. Such term shall include an electronic document. So when it says a rule of evidence, technically the rules on electronic evidence is referring back to the, uh, to the uh, rules of court. And actually the, the reason for this was uh, to, to include within the scope of uh, the rules on discovery, which I know that's part of rules on civil procedure, but, but in effect those, are, those, are, uh, those do have an impact on uh, uh, on evidence, and in fact, uh, there are exclusionary rules embedded in the rules, in the rules on uh, discovery. That electronic documents we were hoping could be included within uh, within the scope of uh, discovery. Okay, that was the that first Easter egg. The second Easter egg is this, which was in the in the uh, uh, and now and now actually uh, considered. You can consider this to be uh, irrelevant or less relevant. This is in the duplicate originals, originals uh, rule, in the rules on electronic evidence. So we said, uh, and I highlight the word document, okay? When a document is one or two more copies. So you will notice if you read the rules of electronic evidence very closely, we always refer to electronic documents. But in this rule, we drop the word electronic. It only says document. And the idea here was that, that uh, this could technically be interpreted to mean that uh, the rule on uh, the best evidence rule had been amended by uh, the Supreme Court that in fact document refers to not only electronic document but also ordinary documents and and that document that argument could have been raised by the OSG in the uh, Napo core case but I, I don't think that they did uh, nevertheless it's now irrelevant because this rule has now been incorporated into the rules on evidence okay so the question, as I said, the singular question that is uh, at issue here is, you know, we're trying to figure out has the relationship, the clear delineation between the rules and evidence and the rules on electronic evidence, is that still good? Or is there some overlap? Now, why, the, why is this a relevant question? Uh, for a couple of reasons, right? And these are the four reasons why. First, in the definition of an original, uh, and this is now on the revised rules, no? Uh, an original of a document is the document itself. Okay, so that's an original. But if you look at the last sentence, it says, if data is stored in a computer, then the printout is the original. So therefore, this last sentence here is actually uh, taken from the uh, rules on electronic evidence. And this is the best evidence rule for, for electronic documents. So if this is a uh, best evidence rule for electronic documents, what is it doing on the revised rules on evidence unless the intention is to include the electronic documents in the definition of original? Okay, so why is it there? Why, is, why do, do, do these rules on evidence, if they're only supposed to cover paper documents, why does it include this, uh, this sentence? It would seem to be surplusage, right? The second one, the second uh, reason why I raised this question is, uh, is the definition of 
documentary evidence. And this is on the revised rules on evidence. Uh, and I, I draw your attention to the second part, which is the definition of photographs. He said photographs, because initially photographs were not included in the rules on evidence. Now photographs actually, uh, you can argue, well, sorry, photographs are not always documentary evidence, okay? But anyway, they added this. Photographs include, of course, still pictures, drawings, stored images and videos, okay? So now when you think about stored images and videos, when you say stored images, you don't refer to a paper, you don't refer to a, uh, a negative, right? Or a print of a picture as a stored image. When you say restored image, you say stored in, stored in some media. And therefore, in that sense, that is an electronic document. So now there's a reference in the definition of a photograph that a photograph under the, gener under the rules on evidence can accommodate electronic photographs, right? And certainly when you say videos, you can argue that, the, sorry, a large, large number of videos, at least in the last 30 or 40 years, are actually electronic. They're stored on magnetic media. And that magnetic media are electronic documents. Now, uh, maybe just as an aside, you may ask, how can a photograph be uh, documentary evidence? Well, a photograph can be documentary evidence if what you're trying to prove is the content of the picture, okay? So if, you're, if the picture, for example, or the video shows, for example, the perpetrator uh, stealing the thing that he's, that, or entering a, a room, right? And you're trying to prove that he entered that room, then the video now and the photograph, or if it's a photograph, are now documentary evidence. And uh, the difference, of course, is that if it's documentary evidence, it must be authenticated before it is submitted. But the purpose, of course, is to prove the facts that are contained in the, are contained in the photograph. Now, you can present a photograph as object evidence. So for example, you are presenting a witness uh, who was run over by a car. So, uh, so he's testifying that he was run over by a, um, a Toyota Hiace, right? So then you show him a picture. Mr. Witness, here is a photograph of a Toyota Hiace. Is this the kind of car, the car that hit you, did it look like this? If the answer, that question now, the use of that evidence is as object evidence. You're not trying to prove that that is the car that hit him. You're trying to uh, uh, have him identify for the benefit of the court what the car looked like via the photograph. So in that case, that object evidence does not have to be authenticated like a document. Okay. Uh, the third reason uh, is that uh, in the third reason why I'm asking why uh, electron, if electronic documents are considered part of the new device rules and evidence is that in the definition of duplicate, it considers a counterpart, you know, that a duplicate is a counterpart that is created by electronic means. Uh, so if you create it by electronic means, then theoretically, for example, if I scan a document or I take a photograph of a document with my phone, I have created a counterpart or a duplicate by electronic means. Now, theoretically, that falls within the definition of duplicate under the rules on evidence. If so, then it would seem that an electronic document or at least an electronic duplicate right, of a paper document would be admissible now under the rules and evidence. And the question now is, do I present, do I authenticate it using uh, the rules on electronic evidence or do I authenticate it uh, in accordance with the uh, rules on, uh, uh, on evidence, the, the revised rules? Okay, so this is another uh, part. The third, of course, relates to the, um, the uh, business records exception, okay? Which, as you can see, uh, contemplates that, uh, the record, right, or the records that are kept are in electronic form. So if the business records are in electronic form, they are now considered exceptions to the hearsay rule under the rules and evidence. Therefore, the question now is, uh, are the rules on electronic evidence, uh, um, are they, what's the word? Uh, uh, now, sorry, are electronic documents or electronic records, do you, do you authenticate them under the rules on evidence? Revised rules on evidence, because you're relying on Section 45 of uh, Rule 130, the rules on evidence, or are you going to rely on the rules on electronic evidence, in which case you authenticate it using that uh, using that provision? Okay, so I I, uh, I was thinking about this, and I, I wish I could tell you that there was a there was an easy answer to this, and I I uh, I ended up thinking about this in this way. Uh, that uh, there are three possible interpretations that uh, you could take with this. The first is that 
Uh, the references in the rules on evidence to electronic documents are drafting errors. Uh, that perhaps in the in the course of uh, transposing uh, transposing definitions from the rules on electronic evidence to the rules on evidence, the words like computer and electronic were in, were uh, ported in. When they if they wanted to keep a clear delineation, they should have dropped those so that if the electronic form of that is going to be used, you refer to the rules on electronic evidence. So that's one way of looking at it. It could be a drafting error. The second is to think of it as it was intentional, right? It's intentional uh, uh, on their part because uh, perhaps, sorry, imagine that you were drafting the rules. Let me, let me see if I can go back to those, uh, oops, if I can go back to those provisions. So imagine you're drafting the rule on, uh, 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 the rules on, on evidence, no? if you're part of the committee, uh, and you've already agreed, you've already agreed that photographs, okay, this provision here, that photographs or electronic photographs are part of documentary evidence. So if you, if you, if you concede that they are, okay, then you will, then you ask yourself a question, then how do I prove, right, what do I do when I, when I need to prove a photograph that is uh, in a stored image or a video, right? Then it's necessary to have this provision. Right? So it's intentional, they said. So in other words, when, you, when this provision talks about data stored in a computer, about what is an original, what you will present, you present the printout, right? Or output readable by sight. So this, the second interpretation that I'm saying is that it's intentional. That, that the data, sorry, that the data, right, stored in a computer referred to in this section of the rules and evidence refers to photographs, which are stored or in video, or electronic counterparts, or counterparts made electronically under the rules, which is under the duplicate uh, original rule under the rules and evidence, or is an electronic record, right, subject of the exception. So those are the three types of electronic documents contemplated by the rules and evidence. And to, to fill in that gap, the drafter said, okay, if that's the case, then output readable by sight or a printout is the form in which you will present it. But of course, uh, if, you, if you take that position, then, uh, then the form of authentication will follow the form of authentication in the rules on uh, evidence. And you will no longer present it or authenticate it as an electronic documentary evidence under the rules on electronic evidence. Okay, so that's uh, the, the third interpretation is that these references are meant to be ignored. And we go back to the old rule where you draw, you put the strong delineation between the rules on electronic evidence and the rules on evidence, um, and that's that that that's perfectly acceptable as well. Uh, if you were to ask me what what I prefer, uh, I, I actually prefer to have uh, to have the third one. Let's keep the delineation and let's keep that uh, separate. Um, I think that uh, what we need to uh, maybe moving forward, uh, maybe it's high time for the Supreme Court to um, put to rest the rules on electronic evidence. And instead, what we put in, in place of the rules on electronic evidence uh, would be the rules on, um, sorry, just the rules on evidence, right? And, and it's a very simple way, it's very simple to, to incorporate the rules on uh, electronic evidence into the rules. All you have to do, uh, number one, is add the word electronic document in the definition of documentary evidence. We don't even need a separate uh, uh, electronic signature uh, rule. Uh, and then, of course, uh, expand the rule on secondary evidence to accommodate uh, secondary evidence such as uh, what is mentioned in the rules on electronic evidence as ephemeral electronic communication. And that's my, that's my presentation.